wise pineapples. Welcome to the Juicy Tidbits podcast, where my mission is to energize you, your team, and your sweet results. I'm your host, Christine Trippy, the Chief Fun Officer here at the Wise Pineapple. Today, my guest star is Sarah Dandeshi. Sarah is a travel expert and award-winning concierge with over 18 years of luxury hotel experience. Sarah is energizing over 128,000 followers with her travel-inspired content creation and TV segments. She was recognized in 2015, get this, as the best young concierge in the world at Le Clador. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, applause and everything. My goodness. You deserve all of it. The, the, the best concierge in the world. Yes. Yes. Wow. And by the way, so I, you know, for, for those that might not know, you know, I've been part of the organization Lake Le Door, which are the gold keys of concierge. Mm -hmm. And as an effort to sort of create and, and like foster future generation of concierge, they always put together, um, oops, <laughs> Sorry about that. They always so I had an effort to put together, um, you know, kind of promote a younger generation of concierge. Mm. Uh, they put together this competition, and every country has to choose somebody to represent them. So oh. I represented the USA. So go team USA, and I was actually the first person from the USA to win, not necessarily the first female, we, there were two other female uh, winners prior to myself, but okay. I was the first one to, to win for the USA. And so you could almost think of it as like the concierge Olympics or something. Yes. And I brought home, I brought home, you're gonna notice a trend here, the uh -huh. gold, okay? Yes. We'll, we'll circle back to that later. Okay, I like it. I love that so much. I, literally, I have goosebumps Ooh. everywhere. That is, so, how did you get to be the representative for USA? You know, it was it was a combination of obviously hard work, but then also just mm -hmm. right timing. A lot of it was, you know, when when they're looking at sort of this future generation of of hospitality professionals at that time. Now, this was obviously now what, six years ago. You know, not that many people were that vocal online. Uh, you could mm -hmm. argue that a lot of the bigger brands were very much like, don't put any of your work stuff online. There, people were very, very strict as far as right. what was being put out there. And I was lucky that I was working at a hotel that was an independent boutique hotel that was mm -hmm. forward thinking. And they were like, we trust you. You are a professional. We trust you. So we know that whatever good you do online is only going to come back and work in our favor. So I, I was given it. pretty much free reigns from the start. And I'm so thankful for that. So mm -hmm. I already had this online presence and they were like, she gets it. And also part of the content that I was creating at the time was a natural extension mm -hmm. of what I did at the concierge desk. The brand was ask a concierge, so not just me, mm -hmm. but a, uh, so it's encouraging right. people to talk to concierge wherever mm -hmm. they are. I am not the only one. There are many talented ones in the world. Mm -hmm. And then also just creating, you know, sharing that information on what to, for me, being based in Los Angeles, what to eat, see, oh, and do in Los Angeles. So nice. it was tying it all in and it was really kind of a great so, you know, even the profession was seeing it like, oh, you're giving us good publicity for the profession as a whole to help train or teach or inspire travelers mm -hmm. to use the concierge, to know yeah. that they are an absolute um, an amenity at a hotel. I love that so much. I was going to ask, are you able to share with us where you were at? Oh, yeah. I was working at the London West Hollywood. So uh, great property right here in the mix of everything in Beverly Hills, um, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills area. And they I mean, I have to say they uh, always will have a very near and dear place in my heart because they let me really kind of grow and and develop everything that I'm doing today. Exactly. The autonomy led to what you are you are today. That's, that's so awesome. So, okay. So a concierge is always getting those crazy requests and things like that. So I have to know what has been the most unusual request asked of you as a concierge? That's PG-13. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course. We're keeping it PG-13 for sure. Um, and I'll be honest. I think most people probably because of my sweet exterior generally kept it pretty PG-13. So I'm lucky and very grateful for that um yeah. i'll just kind of rattle through a couple just to give you an idea because there's not one that really like one you know we had a, a family in from the middle east and they wanted to buy um a teacup maltese oh a, a dog and so we had to find one and then we had to train it and then all of this and we were training the dog throughout the summer and then at the end of the summer they were like oh the dog needs to have certain like shots and everything to go back mm -hmm. and then they were like yeah we're good and so <laughs> and somebody at the hotel ended up 
basically adopting the dog. Uh, I've had people come up that they needed like driving lessons and we had to help them. They were there for a month and they needed to learn how to drive uh, to one of my favorite ones is I had a guest come up to me and he was like, I left my, my bike and like a bicycle, like a nice like road bike in um, a storage place near LAX. I don't know the name of the storage place. I left it with some guy named Jose. Can you help me find it? And I'm like, well, there's a wow. couple of storage places near LAX and there are probably more than a couple of Jose's near LAX. Um, took me three phone calls and I ended up finding the bike for him. Uh, no so, I, it, this, it, so case in point, when what I just like shared with you, it runs the gamut. Like you never know what you're going to get. You really don't. Like, this is the situation. Can you help me figure it out? And I think part of like being that, you know, a really great concierge is to be, is to take the, obviously you want to like personally connect, but like take mm -hmm. it out, uh, take the personalized part of it out of it and, and really kind of dive into being like, all right, let's see. Yes how is the answer. <laughs> yes is the answer. Let's just, we'll, we'll fit and we'll work backwards. From I there. mean, how many yeah. people would have gotten that request about the bike and been like, are you crazy, dude? You know, maybe not. Like, like, sorry, like, dude. Yeah. Yes, oh, for yes. sure. But you said, yes. Let's work on this. I, I did. I, I will say because I am human, I stepped to the back for a minute and I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And then I was like, and then I paused and I'm like, oh, I'm going to figure this out. This I am going to figure this out. So I had a moment to be like, what did, what just landed on my plate? To mm -hmm. And then I was like, no, this is like literally finding a needle in the haystack. And I want to be able to do that. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, for me, it's also whenever I understand that I need to work with uh, an upset customer and, and interact with someone who's been upset. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get anxiety over that. And are, I'm like, let's do this. I'm not going to let anybody walk away from my hotel or my experience. Totally unhappy so yeah it's it's the challenge it yeah. is it's a challenge and it, it, again it's like you're connecting when you as opposed to and i love that you brought this up with um you know what you were kind of talking about like a, if somebody's upset if mm -hmm. instead of you thinking of it like us versus them or two different teams if you're like i'm on team guest so if like mm -hmm. if you're on a team guest like we're going to work together and i'm going to try and get whatever information i can get from you to help make it right if it is like a complaint or like help figure out a solution. So if you really like adjust your mindset to really think that you are on the same team, it yeah. doesn't feel like us versus them. And you're, you're more likely to get to a resolution. Exactly. And you know, just because you just said that us versus them, I have to add this. Yeah. And part of my um, problem resolution and, and uh, training of uh, that resolving problems, and I always talk to uh, my associates and my participants about getting on the same team. Yes. Now, if they come in, they need to check in early, they're here for a wedding and they're going to a wedding and, and you don't have any rooms available and you got 14 other people mm -hmm. and you're just like, sorry, check-in time is at three o'clock. Da, 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 da. Now mm -hmm. it's me against you. Yep. But if you approach it like again, leading from the heart, oh my gosh, you have a wedding at three. You need to get in early. Here's our situation. Let's see what we can do. We yeah. can do about it. Let's work together to figure this out. Yes. Now it's me and you against the problem, not yeah. me against you. Yes, exactly. get on the same team. Yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I could talk about all that all day long. Um, so I want to know from you. I, you kind of explained how I was going to ask you how you went from being in operations at a hotel to moving into this new platform you're in. That's so amazing. Yeah. So you kind of shared a little bit of that. Um, if there's more to that, I'd love yeah. to hear it too. But I also want to know. Do, do, can you see a clear moment in your past where you went from being, hey, I'm just doing this on social media to I've got 128,000 followers? Well, yeah, no, I love these questions. So, I mean, I will say this because obviously, you know, at, at any point in time, you know, people are new to discovering you and your brand online and people, they just see the end product. They see like what's happening today and moving forward, right. uh, wherever they end up joining you in your journey. And I do want to say that it is a journey. So I created the brand NASA concierge in 2012. So okay. that's nine years ago. So this is not like not new to this rodeo and none of that, but it has been a natural evolution. And I say that is that it's, there's not an overnight thing. It's not an overnight success. I knew for me that, um, you know, I kind of created the brand 
honestly, I was actually taking a writing course and the instructor oh. told us all to do a vlog. And I was like, and he was like, think of an area that you're an expert in. And I'm like, uh, I like to eat healthy and work out, but I'm not, that's not my thing. I'm like, <laughs> I guess I'll talk about what I talk about on a daily basis. Nobody's going to want to pay attention. Who would care about what to do in LA? Whatever. It, it's an assignment. I'm just going to do it and get it done with. Um, I guess I'll call it ask a concierge. Literally that, and I say this because whenever we are growing and building anything, I know, right? <laughs> whenever we are growing and building anything, all too often, the simplest ideas or the things that are closest to us that we overlook because yes. they're so close to us, we're like, nobody wants to know the information I have. And it's like, but they do. So all too often we underestimate our knowledge and our power <laughs> that mm -hmm. we have. And so we, if you're looking to create a personal brand or to develop something, you know, all too often you are sitting on the gold mine. You are the gold mine. Yes. And so it very much started organically. Then I was like, obviously playing, uh, you know, quite a bit on Twitter. I've, I grew a big, pretty big following there. And pretty early on, some big brands started reaching out to me to do Twitter chats, like Four Seasons, Ritz Carlton, TripAdvisor. And I'm like, Oh, I think I'm on to something. So yes. then because I have a background in film and TV, I was like, well, I want to be different than everyone else. First of all, I know video is going to keep coming. And this was before video mm -hmm. was king. Video will continue to be king, but I want it to be a certain standard. So I always kept mm -hmm. the quality of my videos to a certain standard just because that was my background. I get it. I understand it. I've been mm -hmm. doing that stuff for quite some time. So it's it's evolved over time. And then I, I we have to say it was like very much it was like, it became its own business. Like once I started making money and then I'm like, okay, well, this is cool. And then I got to a point where I'm like, okay, well, I may, I actually, and this was a very interesting point. Um, I'm losing money going to work. Oh. Because of, when anybody's building a side hustle, that is like the dream, the goal to kind of get to that point. And I'm like, okay, I really am onto some, something because I'm now creating enough, um, I'm able to generate enough revenue that that this can be an actual business. So very much, mm -hmm. I kept the training wheels on probably longer than most. I'm very, I like to take risks, but I also like to take calculated risks. And yes. I don't want to mess around with my livelihood. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of like the background of, of how it grew. And then, you know, I was pretty much all ready to be kind of like on my own prior to the pandemic. But, you know, once the pandemic happened, I'm like, to me, it makes no sense of, there's no going back. Like I'm here. Mm -hmm. I use that time. I was like, I'm going to use this time when everybody's at home, everybody's on their phone, mm -hmm. I will be everywhere. And yes, it. I might not be making much money from it right now. Heck, most people in the industry weren't making much money. So I'm right. just going to double down on creating that content so that as soon as businesses are ready to hire again and to put, you know, they've got budgets that I want right. to be on that short list of people that they want to work with. So that's right. kind of been like the evolution over the past nine years up until now it's amazing our stories are really actually very very similar and i want to know what when did you officially move away from the operations and go fall in oh march of 2020. What? <laughs> i, was, I, was, I, was, I thought it was longer before that well because here's the thing is i kind of got to a point and i'll share i'll share this because it's i share this because you again people so often see the end result they're like oh so fun or this or that mm -hmm. and it's like i actually traveled to 35 destinations in 2019 while having a full time job mm -hmm. so i i literally there was a point in time in 2019 that if i was in los angeles i was working at the desk i had a name tag on i was doing uh -huh. that and as soon as i wasn't working i literally would go home get my packed suitcase go on a plane and i was flying somewhere or driving somewhere to film something in a completely different city country wherever. So it was a very crazy balance. And if I needed more time than say two days, uh -huh. I would, I would then take those four or five days and then I'd come back and I might work 10 days in a row. That, oh, and that was my time in LA. So I would yeah. work the 10 days in a row and then I would have off for five days to go film something else. So I, I share that because it's like, I all too often, again, um, you know, we see these end results and we we kind of overlook the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. So there was a period of time where people were like, 
how can you be working at a hotel? You were just in Asia. And I'm like, I know. I landed this morning. I showered. I put on my suit and I went to the hotel. Oh so, my gosh. And it's crazy. But if you really want to make something happen, like you have to be willing to do the work that other people aren't willing to do. And that's yeah. like, and if you are consistent with that and you consistently do the things I mean, even just last week, I came back from filming. I had five hours at home to pack, write, and film my segments for my videos that came out this coming week. And oh, then, wow. I mean, that's like the pace. So I kind of say that these past couple of years have like kept me the training grounds for yeah. the, this sort of schedule. But again, it's, you know, not everybody has to live at that pace and that schedule. I'm very well aware that that's a bit yeah. unique. But so do you have, at this point, do you have a nice team supporting you, kind of helping you stay organized and, and that sort of thing? I, I do. So I do have, mm. have people that help me with parts of my social media, definitely help me with my editing. I have people, mm. if there's a larger budget on a project, they obviously film and edit. Mm. Um, some of my short, my other things, I, I write and edit. But I'm definitely at the point that I'm like, oh, I now need like, more of like an assistant assistant that helps me a little bit closer with right, that. Right, right. But it's cool. yeah. These are great problems to have, right? Yes, I know. This is just so awesome. I just, I swear, I, I, I know we're going over here, but I, yeah. I just, I just could talk to you forever. So, okay, Sarah, yeah. you know, each episode is a quick juicy tidbit of inspiration to help our leaders to be confident, be empowered, and to lead from the heart. So what are you going to be focusing on today? So I today gonna... I want to focus on, oh, sorry, personalization. Okay, perfect, perfect. And to be empowered with the personalization, right? 100%, 100%. Yeah, I love it, I love it. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to you to give those juicy tidbits to all of our hospitality leaders. Woo! <laughs> Great, I love it. Okay, so um, for me, and I, I think this is so key to you know being a concierge, so I think this was a very much of a natural discussion, but when you think about personalization and you think about the hospitality industry and what what is really the driving factor of why a guest wants to stay at a location, so many properties have amazing, comfortable beds. They have fine china, wonderful linens. They have all of that. But what is it? What's that X factor that gets them coming back to your property? And it's the personalization factor. So I just want to kind of touch on things with that, you know, a couple of things with that. So as far as gathering information, executing, and then ultimately the results. So gathering um, really with that, the, the key to getting information so that you can have and create a personalized experience is listening. So you really want to listen and pay attention, whether it's body language, also listen to maybe what they might not be saying. There's that's also very important as well too, but by having these conversations with individuals, it's amazing what people can will say and share just in passing that you can pick up and you're like, oh, wow, I actually know that they like Marvel comics or whatever it is that they like. They like, you know, Oreo cookies. It doesn't matter. Anything will come up in conversation. So you just kind of like keep a mental mental note of different things that have come come up in that conversation. Um, and then by having this conversation, then you've now you've given yourself ammunition, so to speak, to execute. And ammunition in the sense is like, you know what? I know that they really love Louis Vuitton or I wh whatever. It doesn't really matter what it is that they have this sort of passion. They love mangoes. We'll talk about mangoes because I love mangoes and you can be the pineapple, obviously. <laughs> so they love mangoes. Um, and then next thing you know, maybe they're coming back and then you can create, whether it's a welcome amenity that ties in something that they really like. You can include that in a note that you write. The great thing about executing a personalized experience is that it doesn't have to cost a lot because all it is is a reflection that you have listened and acknowledged a preference or something that is unique to the person. So you don't have to get too bogged down and like, oh my gosh, this is going to be expensive. Personalization is not expensive at all. All it is, is personalized. And then ultimately the end result is that you've created this genuine and authentic experience. And that's what people are looking for. They wanna have this connection because at the end of the day, and I, I know that we can all say this after the past year and a half that we've been through together, it's the human connection that we all really, really are, are tied to. Everything else is extra, everything else is gravy, but that human connection is really what drives us and human connection and personalization just go hand in hand. That is awesome, I love it. And and you were so right. And for, for over a year now, almost 18 months, we've had to think about every move we make, literally how to give this pen to, some, to a guest without infecting them. Yes. And so it's made us 
stop and stop doing the extras and the connections and all of that good stuff because we had to think about every little move mm -hmm. we made. And so now we, that we can breathe again, it's time to bring that personalization, connection, all of and those sweet results back. So I love that. And one of the things that I, I talk about is my acronym LOVE. You have to show up to love your customers. Mm -hmm. If you're not showing up with that attitude, I want I love my customer then and my associates your customer can be a number of different people yeah then 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 you're already set up for for failure right mm -hmm. and the first acronym it, the, the acronym is look for golden nuggets oh by the way vip and end with a wish Love and it. for the l look for golden nuggets and just like what you're saying gather gather those mm -hmm. pieces of information but then the, the the biggest part about finding those pieces of information is then doing something with it. Mm -hmm. If they're celebrating an anniversary and you don't do anything, didn't matter that you gathered it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great point. And, and by the way, it can be those preferences, but it can also be, which I didn't touch on, are those special moments. They're traveling for mm -hmm. anniversary. It's a birthday. Maybe it's their child's birthday. They're traveling for the first time with their dog. All of these are like really special things that, um, that you, you can, so long as you just, you listen, you, yes. they are, they are sharing these, as you said, golden nuggets, which we will come back to. I keep yes. planting these seeds, so <laughs> it'll make sense in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So just offhand, do you remember one of your favorite personalizations that you did? Uh, yes. Okay. So one of them, and, and it's interestingly enough, it, interesting enough because I actually ended up becoming good friends with this family. I probably have known them now for almost over 10 years. They stayed at one of the, um, another property that I worked at. And, uh, I know that the one woman loves espresso martini. She would always post about it on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and we became friends enough. So it wasn't like weird that I was like on her social media. Like it was that, mm -hmm. that was, that was okay. So it wasn't stalker status, but it was something that was like a natural thing. Like, Oh, she has a, she has an espresso martini everywhere she goes. So I knew that they were coming in. Um, it was a little bit early on the early side, but I was like, oh, well, they just got off a plane. For, that was a 19 hour flight from, from Australia. And I, as soon as they came in and they were checking in at the front desk in, we slide over an espresso martini upon check-in. And she was like, no way. And again, it wasn't that expensive. No, nope. it was a simple gesture. Will she ever forget that? Never. No. no. And that's what it's all about. It's the simple things that yeah. you, you would, could do anyway. And, mm -hmm. just, and now we've become friends. Like I know her children, they've grown up, they've gotten engaged. Like it's wow. What a way I, to such a special. And by the way, I should even say that was at an old hotel I worked at. They followed me and they would at times come and stay with me at my, the next hotel I worked at, which again, it's that human connection. Yes, it is. I, oh God, I love, I, I'm just exploding. I can talk about these personalizations. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm going to just turn my camera real quick. Let's see. Can you see Hugh Jackman? Oh, I can. I can. <laughs> I look like him in real life. I have met him. So keep going. Wait. Oh, holy shnikes. You've met Hugh Jackman? You are not, I am not a concierge in Beverly Hills and haven't met a bunch of celebrities. Yes, I have met him. And he would always stay with his wife and she handles everything. Uh, but yeah, on multiple occasions. And yes. Yes, I love him. I, I well, I, I, handsome in real life. Okay. Oh, hot damn to Molly, man. I don't even know if I can continue. <laughs> but he is my favorite. Okay. And um, uh, I was showing up for a keynote uh, for McNeil Hotels and they uh, searched my Facebook. They found out I love Diet Coke and Captain Morgan and Hugh Jackman. <laughs> and in my room is yeah. Hugh Jackman with Captain Morgan and Diet Coke. <laughs> I love that. And if oh you could have seen God. me trying to get this on the airplane and this, the flight attendant was having none of it, I'm like, he's not being left behind. <laughs> no way. Have to, no, he's coming yeah. with. Even if yeah. you have to pay for an extra seat. <laughs> yes. And then I then that's something that costs a little bit more money, a little bit more um, yeah. uh, intense, if you will, wower. But let me give you one that was just so simple, just like what you just did, is I put on the first of the year, I always pick a word of the year. Mm 
Okay. And this year, it was uh, last year, it was growth. When I was going into my own company and doing all that, I checked into a hotel of somebody who follows me. And in my room, there was a note um, with growth, my word of the year, and a little plant and just some, a nice message. Well, I have chills hearing that. And by the way, that's what it is. All of these little moments, yes. like they give you chills. Like they give you chills even to just like, just share the story. Like I love that because it's thoughtful. Yes. And that's what it is at the end of the day. It's all about being thoughtful. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just two that happened to me. I've got millions of stories about my, my own fun stuff, but okay. So you know that I am the chief fun officer here over yes. at Sunrise Pineapple. I always like to make room for a little bit of fun. I've okay. baked up a new game for you. It's called fill in the blank. Okay. <laughs> Travel edition. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yay. All right. My next big trip I want to take is. Oh gosh. That's a no. great one. Uh, to Morocco. Ooh. Morocco. Okay. I got to, I got to learn more about that when you get planning. Okay. The most memorable travel experience I've had was blank. When I went to Dubai and I got to bring my mother, I went for a work trip and to see her there having the time of her life um, and to have her see that moment of me being mm -hmm. there in my element as well too. It was actually a concierge conference. Oh. Um, it was, it was so it was great because it's this combination of a my mother is loves the Middle East. So she oh. got to really feel like she was in her element. But then B, you know, she had been hearing about all the work that I've been doing for the concierge community, but then to actually see me up on stage speaking, you know, interacting with my colleagues, um, that was a really heartwarming moment as well, too. So whenever I get to do anything with her, uh it it, it gives me chills. That's, that's so cool. I love that so much. That's awesome. All right. My favorite international cuisine is blank. Thai food. Oh, Thai food. Okay. Yeah. Thailand is one of the places that are major on my bucket list. Um, yeah. Have you been there? I have. I did. I, oh. I went in 2019, actually. So. Oh, very nice. Okay. I went to China in 2019. Oh, haven't been there yet, but soon. Amazing. I, I can't even tell you. It's amazing. Uh, all right. My favorite travel my favorite travel tip is blank. Uh, okay. Not overpacking your schedule. I have the rule of threes mm. when it comes to planning. So if you're a foodie, you can plan a lunch and a dinner and one activity. Um, or if you like to do activities and you're, you know, want to do, then you can do two activities and one dinner. Keep a super simple rule of threes. Obviously, you're probably going to do way more than that throughout the day. But if you keep it that simple, that gives you breathing room. Should things take longer? Should you need a break? Should you stumble across something and you're like, I really want to do this. I didn't even know this existed. So you want to have some sort of structure so that you get to do things that you want to do, but you want to leave enough breathing room for you to really live in the moment. And not get so stressed and then yeah. have a bad vacation because of yeah. it. That's exactly. a that's a really good tip. And here's just something I want to add to that. I've been trying to tell this to everybody who will listen to me, that if you're going out into the world today, you need to go with big time patience yes. and extra time. Yes. You need extra time for absolutely everything because everything right now is a longer wait, a longer drive, a longer everything. From and the airport to the roads to hotels checking in to yes. restaurants. All of it, excursions, everything. Everything is taking a little bit longer right now. So if you're cutting yourself short, you're just going to be that that Karen at the front desk or that Karen or Ken somewhere, and you don't want to be that person. So leave yourself extra time. So I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that. Yeah. All right, last one here for you, my friend, is on an airplane, I prefer the blank seat. Oh, window. Window. Man, always, always. How else am I going to get those cool Instagram shots? Like, come on. <laughs> right. You know, like that. My thing about window seats is I, uh, I, for me, that's my way to like look out and just like put everything in perspective. Cause mm -hmm. we are like up there. The world is so small. The people look so small. You can't even see people on the ground. Yeah. And it just, it is always that reminder of perspective. And that's why I, I have to have a window seat. Yes. I love the window seat. If my flight is more, more than, than 
four hours, I think, four, yeah. four and a half hours, then I usually get the aisle because I know I'm going to have to be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have no problem crawling over somebody. We have okay. a talk at the beginning. It's like, it's all good. Yeah. I can also last a really long time most of the time. So I'm pretty good with that. I love it. <laughs> well, Sarah, tell everybody where they can connect with you, see your awesome content. And also you have a new book coming out. Tell I do. I do. So I have a book that'll be coming out uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, and it is called Hospitality from Within. And it's all about those the, how to kind of create those genuine and authentic experiences. But it also ties in a lot of stories from other individuals within the industry. Because as we know, ho the hospitality industry is not just one person's story, but it is all of us and how we all work together to create the ultimate experience. So, um, so I'm so delighted be able to share not only you know a little bit of my background and story but also uh all of the insight and tidbits from my friends around the world yeah. uh, now that being said you can connect with me everywhere i'm all over the place <laughs> online um i also have a podcast that's called say yes to travel but you can connect with me on social media at ask a concierge very heavily active on instagram but i'm on facebook as well too linkedin you can connect with me via my name sarah dandishi and um yeah if there's, if there's a place that you like to hang out online, I'm probably there. So awesome. I love it. Well, as you know, we end every huddle with great energy. Yes. So I know you have a phrase of the day today. I do. I do. Do I share it now? Or yeah, later? Tell, tell us what the phrase of the day Okay. Is. So the phrase, which we had, by the way, been peppering in, uh, stay golden. Stay so golden. stay golden. You want to stay golden. This is what we want to do. So yes, absolutely. And also it brings you, it reminds you of the outsiders. Stay golden, Tommy boy. Exactly. <laughs> pony boy. <laughs> no, pony boy. Pony, pony boy. boy. Yeah, pony boy. That's right. <laughs> All right. So everybody, wherever you are, if you're in your office, your lobby, your bathroom, your car, put your hand in. And Sarah, count us out. All right. Three, two, one. Stay, stay golden. golden. <laughs> <laughs> I rushed that. <laughs> That's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You are amazing. I I just love every moment I get to spend with you. Thank you for taking the time. I know how busy you are to come here and do this for all of our hospitality industry. You rock. Oh my gosh, you rock more. I love <laughs> it. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. And you know, I'm a super fan of yours as well, too. So thank you thank for you. including me. Thank you. I'll see you soon.